you know, speaking of which, let's look forward a bit uh, past the election. Let's look at the two outcomes here. Either you're going to have um, divided government again because Republicans weren't able to capture those Senate seats or even Democrats were able to take back the House or what have you, uh, but Republicans retain control of the governorship, or you'll have a trifecta. Now, um, in the first scenario, that seems like it's probably pretty straightforward and it's going to be pretty similar to how things have been going, which is not much done in the way of gun policy, right? Is that your expectation in that scenario? Yeah, pretty much. If, if it's not a trifecta, then we're going to be at a stalemate. Uh, we should be able to block gun control, but uh, we shouldn't. We won't be able to roll back much of any significance. Uh, and, and that happens, our efforts are going to shift to the courts to go after okay. these a lot of these laws on constitutionality and just knock out a lot of the bad stuff from the court system. So we won't be dead in the water completely. But a far better way to handle this is through the legislature. That's right. way better. And that's why it would be very disappointing if we don't get a trifecta. Right. OK. And then if you do get the Republican trifecta, what, what do you think is realistic in terms of uh, how gun policy would flow from there? I think, uh, you know, I think they, the, the General Assembly, uh, the Republican General Assembly and the pro-gun side understands how hated local, not having preemption at the local government level is. Uh, not being able to carry in state agencies like uh, the ABC store or DMV or even the General Assembly. Where he's historically always been able to carry there until 2020 and 2021. And uh, and now, you know, up, to, up through now, we'd like to see that reverse. Red flag law is up there as well. Now, because of that huge turnout in 2020, we did manage to, to really get the other side to backpedal on gun control quite a bit. As far as red flag laws go, Virginia's is probably the least egregious in the country uh, because of the criteria in there. But it's still egregious. <laughs> it's least egregious. It's less egregious, but it's still egregious. So. Well, that's high up on the list to repeal red flag. Uh, we have laws already to take care of the issue of what happens if somebody has you know, a mental health crisis uh, and controlling their access to guns or any such a thing. Hmm. And uh, something like the, the one gun a month restriction, yes. you think? One gun a removed? month. I mean, our list is actually quite long, but at the top of the list were the, the things I listed, uh, local gun control, um, the... Uh, um, uh, Government, state agency buildings, and so forth. Red flag laws. Yeah, one gun a month is another thing that gets people in trouble all the time because they don't, uh, they don't, you know, you don't know when you last bought a gun. A lot of times, you don't mean any harm, but uh, you know, or you want to buy two guns. Now you can't. You know, you found uh, the perfect gun, and you want to buy a backup for it, or you you see two perfect guns. Uh, you, you know, so. Uh, and a lot of people don't know that they're permit exemption from that either. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then obviously there's also the universal background check yeah. law. Oh, yeah. Do you see that being something that could really yeah, very much be I see something happening there because we've already have a, a in the courts in Virginia now, VCDL managed to get a stay on on uh, 18 to 20 year olds buying handguns being exempt. We got that exemption in. Uh, we've got to stay against it being enforced against them because uh, the judge agreed it was unconstitutional. Uh, somebody 18 to 20, could there be no legal way for them in any way, shape, or form to get a handgun um, to purchase one, even in a private sale. You can't buy one from a dealer. That's federal law. But federal law allows you to get a gun as a, as a, from a parent or a friend, anybody uh, that's a third party. And this would have blocked that because everything would have had to go through the gun dealer and under federal law, the gun dealer would have to say, sorry, I, I, I can't do the transfer. So we got that exempted. Um, and we're waiting for the, we actually brought up the whole universal background check in that lawsuit. So we're waiting for that to shape up. But I suspect that that's another one that we're going to be able to either amend or, or get rid of. Interesting. Just because, uh, you know, obviously, if you get a majority, it'll probably be a pretty thin majority in, in both houses. And Youngkin himself is a fairly moderate Republican. Uh, I don't know that he's really spoken very much on this issue. I, I mean, perhaps you could enlighten us, I guess, a little more on where 
where you see Glenn Youngkin going with all this? Do you think he would actually sign the repeal of a red flag or universal background check bill? Well, you know, he's really um, an unknown because he's not been tested on any of this stuff. Um, he's spoken pro-gun about things. I've not heard, heard him talking about any gun control. So, uh, but he's untested, to be fair. I mean, it, it's possible, but I think it would be unlikely that he would veto something like that. But uh, it's it's all, it is, a, you can never rule it out. But again, yeah. um, the Bruin ruling um, is something that we're going to be using quite a bit. If something's unconstitutional, it, it's unconstitutional. I certainly would hope he would uh, back anything that's clearly unconstitutional. And you think that'll be helpful when you're uh, sort of lobbying these these lawmakers? Uh, if you do get even sort of more republic or more uh, moderate Republicans into these some of these seats, uh, sure. you think that perhaps Bruin will help you? Uh, we've we've got you know, the win with them? city of Winchester, uh, and we're going to be going after some more localities. The uh, the board has approved suing some more lawsuits going out there. So at least one other city in the near future is going to be uh, is going to find themselves in the hot seat over parks and things of that nature. Mm -hmm. And you think those lawsuits will help you in the legislature as well? Yes, because now you've got judges confirming that, yeah, this is unconstitutional. Let's go ahead and get it off the books. Let's not have unconstitutional laws on Virginia's books, which will only confuse citizens and maybe get the government sued and paying a lot of money when it, it shouldn't have been in the position to, uh, to make that kind of mistake. 